What's new in filmmaking technology this week? News, reviews, education, insights, opinions, and ideas from the Cine D Newsroom with Nina Leitner and Johnny Bahiri. This is Focus Check, the weekly Cinetech podcast. Welcome to episode 14 of Focus Check, the Cine D podcast. This is Johnny Bahiri. This is Nino Leitner. Nino, how are you? I am very well. And how are you? I'm I forgot always, to ask you last week. I'm always good. What's the, what's the choice in life? Huh? So this week, we're going to focus on a subject that's been a bit of a buzz online. And uh, I think we have some some things to say about this as well, with um, many is, years of experience <laughs> of doing reviews. So we want to talk about what makes a balanced camera review specifically in our eyes. Johnny, I'll let you start. So the question is where to start? Yeah. Because this is a very vast, um, it's it's huge topic, of course, and we are fully aware of concerns from the audience, from the manufacturers, from ourselves, yeah. So where should I start? First of all, we have been doing camera reviews for what? 16 years. 16 years now. We've touched, I don't know how many cameras, yeah. And I think we it's a safe to say that both of us, actually, we belong to um, a different generation, maybe a generation of filmmakers who actually work with cameras and produce with cameras. Uh, I'm saying this not in a patronizing way, but of course, there's a, a, a different generation now. Yeah, we didn't start with making videos for the internet. We started with working, working for money. On productions, that's our job. I mean, that's you know, that's uh, we have a lot of experience shooting for television, for cinema, for commercials, whatever. Uh, yeah. For clients, a lot of work we can never show <laughs> because yeah. it's been for somebody else. Yeah, it doesn't make us better in some ways. Meaning there are other people who are very enthusiastic; they do great job even without doing pay jobs and so on. But what is uh, essential here to say that we have a lot of experience in touching cameras and also judge them. Well, I'll also judge them on the basis of how they work in the field on a paid production. Although, of course, those are always personal experiences because Absolutely. we are, as shooters, as cameramen, we are cinematographers, whatever we call it. We had this topic before. Um, we are judging it from our work experience, with in which in on different levels, it's you know like we both are a bit more towards documentary shooting in our experience. Um, I did a you know bit more commercial stuff and and sometimes with bigger crews, I guess. But it's basically documentary slash commercial uh, experience that we are applying to when we judge a camera. But we are fully aware of this. So we are fully aware that maybe, you know, the Alexa 35 is not the camera we could judge from a one-man band experience. Yeah, and yeah. Of course, it has to be relevant. Personally, I tried one or two commercials. It was boring. Money was great, but it was really <laughs> boring. Having so many people around, having a full track of lights outside, knowing that actually... We don't need it, but somebody somebody needs to please the client and show where his money goes to. Uh, that's simply not me slash our way because, yeah, it's like you you know it, it's yeah. So we we'll, I love documentaries. I think you love documentaries too. And actually, the smaller the the team is, it's more engaging. It's more storytelling. But that also brings brings me back to the topic of reviews. That's how we try to conduct uh, many of our reviews, not just to point the camera towards bricks and say, hey, rolling shutter, blah, blah, blah. But or just look at the, you know, just the problem is if you don't go out with a camera and actually apply it in the field is that it's very theoretic. And, and, and I think we've, you know, like we've probably also sometimes made this mistake because we cannot apply it everything to exactly where it's needed. And of course you cannot use a, especially a new product or something that you don't have a lot of experience with on a paid job, right? I'm, we're trying this. We've tried this in the past many times uh, when when it's more of a long-term review or something like that. Um, but of course it's like you can't, well, you can't risk it on a, on a, 
on a paid gig to have like a camera that's maybe not ready uh, or whatever it is. It would yeah. may mostly talk about cameras here. Uh, but on the other hand, also, you know, of course, we in most cases cannot actually share footage that we are shooting on those things as part of a review. I mean, that needs to be like a special agreement with a producer. But in, I would say, uh, n- nine out of 10 cases, it's not possible. Yeah, but that's why we are actually moved away from, let's say, uh, testing the cameras on a, on a paid job yeah. and actually create our own little environment that actually simulating a job in a way. And it's always nice to see if we are working for the camera or, or the camera is working for us. But again, to the to the to the point of re- reviewing a camera, um, I think it's very difficult to review a camera inside out from A to Z in a relatively short time, especially all all of those modern cameras. So what we try to do is really touch the essence of it. And of course, it can be that with time, with framework updates. And with uh, app updates, maybe the cameras can do more and then we are trying to go back and maybe test the additional stuff. But all in all, we are trying to be very uh, precise with our um, observation. And also, you know, at the end, being a filmmaker, let's say that we are working with certain level of cameras and suddenly we have something very small or a mobile phone or whatever, we also have to adjust our opinion to be relevant to the tool that we are testing. Because otherwise, why should I always say, hey, this tool is useless for big production, but maybe this tool is not for big production. So we have to be, we have to take so many thing, uh, things into, the cons- into considerations here. But this is only one aspect. So we are relying heavily on our expertise and our experience. But then, of course, the other side, there are two other sides of the equation. One is, of course, the manufacturers, and the other one is the audience. And that's where it can get a little bit tricky. And we also want to talk openly about those subjects. So first of all, let's start with the manufacturers. Nino, when we do a review or when we review a camera from whatever manufacturer, what do they expect from us? That's a good question. What do the manufacturers expect for us? Well, I do guess they pay for the review. You know no, what? Let no. They're not paying for a review. For a camera review, they're no, not paying. they're not paying for a, for a review. And the uh, the camera, basically, what they expecting is, of course, exposure of the product at the lowest level. You know, like that's whether it's in what way, in one way or another. I think they all, you know, like uh, any 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 publicity is good publicity in a way, right? It's uh, you talk about a product, and if we consider something not worth reviewing we would not review it right um so we meaning, should have some interest too that's me, what I mean. that I, I just want to say like uh if i touch something and it's absolutely horrible i would not review it like i i, I feel no point in reviewing it unless it would be something you know from a big manufacturer and it's the next best big thing and they claim that it is, and then we feel almost obliged to do that. But that's usually not the case. I mean, honestly, almost every camera is amazing now. Like uh, you know, like <laughs> especially comparing them to what we had five or ten years ago, where the differences were enormous. You know, like right now, we are really the 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 differences between cameras are it's very incremental what's actually happening because everything is so good. I mean, you can literally take a small camera and intercut it with the top line cinema camera and you will not be able to see the difference if it's properly color graded. We've seen many, many of those examples. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a, so, the, so we're really at a level now where when we talk about what the what the manufacturer is expecting, I will like expect they I guess they expect a from us because we've you know like with our reviews that we've done for so many years, I guess they expect a deep dive almost like a like a like a deep dive how how does it compare to the predecessor? how does it compare to the competition and how does it fare in a normal working environment, right? How would we judge it personally? That's one thing. and what else do they expect where well, we have this different type of reviews which it's kind of unique uh and probably the 
the type of review that is that Cinity is most regarded for are the lab tests, right? I think that's fair to say. Um, it's uh, not not to pat our own shoulder. It's basically that's what we hear, right? That's what we hear. That a lot, and we know from the audience, also manufacturers, they're waiting for our dynamic range, exposure, latitude, and rolling shutter tests, which are absolutely objective tests, which are absolutely standardized, and the goal is to have them as standardized as possible, like the same thing with every camera, really just sh looking at those three aspects of a camera. Now we don't, we're not able to do both types of reviews for every camera, where, where we try to do as many of po as possible. But going back to your question, I think, what do they expect? They expect, well, they hope for a, you know, like a positive review. The only thing they can expect is publicity in a sense that there will be a review what the content will be i don't know so it's very important to say that two things first of all we are working very closely with many of the manufacturers i think yep. it's it's fair to come up front and say through all of these years we we know the companies we know the people behind the company companies we learn how to respect what they do and the product they bring to the market and i think in the same it's a, it's, it goes both ways. I think they they learned to respect our work and our opinion. I think they also know that what we communicate with our audience, it's very important that it will be honest. And I'm saying at the end we have only one face. Yeah. So, th th and that's that's the strength here. If they will, if they will start to push us into corners that they would like us to come up with whatever conclusions. We will not agree, and then eventually nobody will watch. And I remember very cl clearly many years ago we tested one uh, like a like a camera from a very um, very respected company, and the results were not so good. Yeah, and we were by the way some of the reviews we do share beforehand, and the idea is just to get feedback on some some things that we found out, just to know if that's because. The product is not fully complete or there's a technical... But we often uh, have questions, right? We have questions uh, and there's issues that we run into and then we ask them, is this normal? Exactly. And if we get a reply, we will include uh, uh, that reply. Uh, exactly. And yeah. this is one of the benefits of being in contact with the manufacturer. So uh, that, that, that we do have this kind of open door to ask the question and get the answer and deliver it or present it to, to the audience. But we just have to add for... They, they don't have any influence whether we will not publish or not. It's just, exactly. here it is. What do you have to say to that in kind of in your defense, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and what do anything we you feel we have to add in terms of, or is there one aspect? Because that's also one thing, right? Sometimes they're really proud of one aspect or something that, can you look at that too? And that's fair, right? That's fair if they ask that. And we can then assess, is it worth watching, looking at? Is it is it something we forgot or is it something that we intentionally think it's not as important? Yeah. I just want to finish the story. So this manufacturer was very kind of disappointed from the review that uh, I made and um, the person who kind of was representing the company this time uh, said, Johnny, you know, the engineers are really, really sad about the outcome of the review. And I said, you know, the only solution here is just to make better cameras. That's, that's simple <laughs> as that. So, I, I'm just saying. So we know that there are expectations from the manufacturer. As you said, the list is kind of publicity, which anyway we're doing because the review will be there. I don't think that when it comes to camera reviews, we ever had any issue with any manufacturer who wanted from us to write or specify something specific. I don't remember any pressure like this. So at the end, we are getting pre-production models we're getting cameras beforehand we actually also working on some future developments and we regard this as a as a positive thing not as a negative thing the the thing is that it gets a bit more complicated when some of those companies are also advertising with us and i think we have to be transparent here and we try to be you know if we are working in a co collaboration with a, a specific camera on a let's say a marketing gig which is 
NAB, for example, and better coverage of, of uh, NAB f- with, with Fujifilm, for example, that might be also for the benefit of, the, of our audience. And at the same time, I know that some will question, so how can you make the definition between the marketing aspect of, of such a thing and when you review a camera? And in all honesty, we never... Let, let, let me rephrase. Before collaborating with the camera with the camera manufacturers we were we were reviewing cameras and I guess we will also continue if tomorrow there is no more contact with manufacturers well a lot of the camera manufacturers don't advertise and it doesn't matter yeah, we review uh, them anyway uh, right it's uh, like uh, exactly it's completely unrelated so yeah. we the, the advertisement in our site of course help us to to grow and to develop and But there was never ever any pressure from any manufacturer to uh, to put us put us in a certain corner and say if you will not say something positive or you know have a th- th- there was a, there was a different incident and I think this is nice to actually uh, mention in one of our um, uh, lab test re- reviews many 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 years ago. One of the manufacturers was really not happy with the result. They were not advertising with us, but on the other hand, we used to get some pre-production models to test, and that stopped for some time. But after that, I think the manufacturer also realized that there is no point to boycott us with products because at the end, those products will be in the market anyway. We'll get them anyway. We, we'll and test if, them if, anyway. <laughs> if we have any interest, we're going to test them. So yeah. it's not it's not a matter of boycotting or whatever. Just one thing to add here. Well, first of all, the um, uh, the it could be that we lost, that, that somebody decided not to advertise anymore, but those things are not connected Like for us, right? Like no, nothing if, to do if we wrote something better. No, no, but I mean, bad, like if, even if we, you know, like if somebody in the, com- because it's never, people always perceive these companies as, and that's one thing that I have an issue with, with the current discussion online. People always, the audience seems to perceive those companies when they see the names as of the companies body. as one body. They're not. Like anything else, they consist of many individuals, and those are huge companies generally. And there might be people inside those companies that have an issue if you you know like if you if you write a critical review or do a critical video review, and then uh, maybe the PR person has a, from country X, y, Z has a problem with it. But there are other people inside the company that we've been in touch with for many years. That know the value of those reviews never the, despite that so very often and that's also one of the things that people need to be aware of though that's those are moving things right that, that there's sometimes I'm sure there's discussions inside those companies about those things for sure right because we I'm absolutely certain that there were issues before where you We did a review somebody inside one of the companies didn't like it then they talked about it internally and then you Something happened which we will never find out but the, in the end at the end of the day like you said we will always get the camera and if we don't if in that one case we don't get it from a manufacturer we just rent it you know like yeah. and then we review it so they know and especially with objective tests and I think that's the value of the lab tests right that there is nothing to hide it's 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 as scientific as possible it's mathematical and um, you know like anything else we know the normal reviews, Of course there's always a bias there's a bias because every one of us has a pr- like a preference in terms of what cameras they like to work with like it's not a secret that you like to work with Fujifilm cameras right and that just for that's probably your camera of choice just out of habit and also because you like their features so you will look at different things uh, when a new one comes out because you will also have more experience with them than me. When I review a Fujifilm camera, I might discover some things that I've simply not been aware of because I've not used the camera as much as you and vice versa with Sony. You know, like I, I work with Sony cameras on productions a lot more. So, you know, like I'm, I'm certainly much more aware of some aspects inside those cameras, but that's a personal bias and that has nothing to do with... Um, uh, influencing an opinion at all it's like but it of course comes from personal experience and everybody will discover different things and the other thing i wanted to say is the uh the the whole pr department versus 
the development uh, division of a company and also the management, um, I think a lot of the discussions online now deal with the fact that of those press events, right? And those press events are not a new thing. I mean, that's something that I have to point out. Those things have always been there since we started. Not, I mean, in, not also in our industry, but... In, in every industry. It's just, it feels like a lot of people forgot about them happening or weren't aware that they happened because during COVID, those three, four years, they did not happen, right? Um, I was flown out to, and you were flown out to big events for manufacturers, which worked exactly the way as they do now, right? There's nothing new about this. This happened before all the big manufacturers did them. And we also always had issues with them because it's not possible. It's simply not possible to do a review as part of such an event. But I don't remember anybody expecting us to come up no, with I'm a just saying, review. No, I'm I don't, not, I don't remember not anybody. Not from us, yeah. not us. But I'm saying it feels like um, the, the, talk, the talk online is now, it's almost like some people, like some YouTubers, creators are now almost like pigeonholed into like blame that they went to such an event where I think there's nothing wrong with going to such an event, but that doesn't mean that your, you know, like your your opinion is bought by the company. Because of course, I mean, that's usually a all expenses paid trip, but in the end, it's a lot of stress. And it's like, if you've been doing this for many years, I have zero desire to go to, like seriously, like, like that, that it's nice to go and it's nice to get, behind the scenes information about stuff like that but in reality i think we prefer a million times more to get a camera to test it and outside of the bus which yeah. is sometimes difficult it it was actually during the covid years it was much more convenient because they couldn't do those events so they had to send them so they, that's uh, there there were and 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 then of course you can do a proper review but if you're there for one or two days and then um everybody's kind of like put in a nice location and then here's the camera, do something with it. The only thing you can do is a first hands-on. And I had a similar experience I had recently for the first time, of course, with the Apple event, with the iPad Pro. First time we were at an Apple event, same thing, right? Uh, it's impossible to do. So the only thing it is, it's a hands-on and it has to be labeled as such. But of course, what what prevents you? And I, I think that's something that is a message for to younger creators also. Don't be completely in the bubble of the manufacturer of course they want positive thing but there is nothing wrong with telling with talking about the issues you have with a product even if it's on the first hands-on or even if it's a question you know it's, it doesn't mean like you need to uh there's no reason to kind of like you know have clickbaity articles like clickbaity titles on your videos to say something negative about this that's unfair but of course you should be critical about it. Of course you should raise issues with it. Like when I cover this Apple event, even though it's the first time, I will mention that, okay, maybe it's not a great idea. I haven't touched it. I haven't had a chance to test it yet. But this Final Cut camera app, if it's recording ProRes 422 HQ in 4K, maybe not the smartest idea because it has to be transferred over trans, um, transferred over Wi-Fi. You know? Of course you should mention those things. I mean, there's no reason to, to, be, to be kind of you know, like mute about that. It's like, wh wh what are people fearing that they're not going to be invited to the next event? If that's the case, I don't think any manufacturer would, would, would do that. Right. Because if again, the awareness of a product, even though, uh, if it's a, if it's a balanced impression, even if it's not a review, but like a first impression, if it's balanced, it's so much more valuable for the audience. And in the end also for the manufacturer, because um, what point is it to to just sugarcoat everything? Yeah, the thing is, we live in a in an age, and now I want to touch the audience side. Yeah, when we when when we tell or when we talk that we are going to events, flight is paid, and uh, of course hotel hotel is paid, and and so on. This will automatically put us and other reviewers too, in a very bad position. And I understand that there are a lot of concerns here. We can only talk for our, ourselves. Yeah, we, we, we will always, as you said, we will prefer to test a camera or see a camera at our office. It's not that we are looking 
to go somewhere this we can pay by ourselves to go for vacations but even if this happens it's not that in all honesty i don't feel that we are doing something which is sabotaging our work it's not that we will necessarily give a good opinion not at all on on a product because we were invited so the only thing which is missing for me and maybe i really need i need the help from from our audience it's like how to better transfer this feeling to our audience because in an age when everything is conspiracy everything is negative everything is uh considered to be somehow biased uh, like 100 biased or and it's not in in all honesty it's not that i'm looking for anybody to believe what we say or what we review i i just want a certain level of confidence that we are still here to serve our audience too it's not that we are not that anybody bought us or our opinion this is more important it's not that our opinion is is equal a certain amount of money here or certain amount of trips yeah so uh it, it's 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 important to know that, that we are doing our best and of course when we talk about and un- un- like biased versus unbiased opinion we are coming from a different starting point meaning what camera we usually work with and uh what our expectations and what do we usually do in terms of filming but it's not that we are ah okay let's give a a, go- a good mark to a camera because of one two three and we also accept expect the the audience before making a decision actually actually to to try to touch the camera by themselves and see if it's working for them because whatever is working for us not necessarily will work for somebody out there because of simply a different way of producing stuff well i think it's also a matter of perspective if you're in your early 20s and started a youtube channel of course you're excited if you're invited to those those things and some of those people might feel this pressure and I, I'm, i'm just hoping that when they listen to something like this they will understand that it's not that's actually detrimental to your own brand if you kind of talk after the manufacturer right and copy their bullet points from their press releases in a way in your day i want to give a credit to to those guys no, I guess. i'm just saying it's like it's it, 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 i know they are doing great work i'm just saying like if you are in the position you build up a youtube channel and it's doing well because you you know um, rent the cameras or get them from somewhere else and do proper reviews and then it gets a gets a standing online and then uh, you start getting invited you know like i don't think anybody should feel this pressure because if anything i mean if you've been doing this for so many years i mean i'm in my 40s you're in your 50s it's it's Thank like <laughs> it's there is no i have zero like literally it's it's if anything it's an investment from our side because it takes so much time to go there there is zero like if you go to such an event it's a lot of stress if it's overseas it's even more stress it's a very far trip for you you are somewhere for a couple of days uh you're completely embedded into this they, they do like events all the time and then you have to do a video or, or feel like you have to do a video or something written in a very short amount of time and and if anything it's an investment from our side because it's actually time that's lacking elsewhere where we could could do proper review of something or you know like write an article or do another video the, this the time is worth a million times more than what the manufacturer puts on those trip in my opinion you know like I, i don't get excited by those trips i mean it's nice to see the nicest thing about those trip is to see your colleagues that's for me and i'm sure for you too it's kind of like to get in touch with other people who are doing a similar thing and just kind of like you know like get aligned with them now the one thing i want to point out what we do what what's different from us and probably one of the reasons why we don't care about those things uh, as much as others is simply that we strive to in the in the background we strive to have very good contact to the manufacturers completely outside of those events those events are usually put up by their marketing or pr departments whereas we try to talk to the manufacturers to the developers of the camera right to the technical people behind the camera to the to the to the product managers that are really know every detail about a camera and they are 
part of those events, but they are not the ones who put those events on. Those who put those events on are the people who want the good publicity, the advertising department, marketing, PR, whatever. But we go to all the trade shows. We go to NAB and IBC, and we've been doing this for also 15, 16 years. So this is where we meet the people. Um, we go to meet them behind the scenes in Japan, right? Uh, we have so many interviews online to prove that which are completely outside of those events. So there is this context already. So yeah. if anything, you know, like we, we we just want to have the product and deal with it and give feedback on it. And a lot of the feedback we are giving is never actually ending up in a review because we feel like we want to have the best, as, as filmmakers, we want to have the best camera possible because... Nobody wants to make a bad product. I think you said that once. That's really smart. I mean, that's true. You know, like nobody wants to make a bad camera. They know they are in a highly competitive market. They are competing about against other manufacturers. They are competing against smartphones, right? So they have to try really hard to make something good. So we try to help us filmmakers by the, giving them feedback on very often pre-production models or ideas because they know they can trust us and that's important. And, and, and then it's like, you know, those events, the nicest thing about them is just to meet the other creators because that's amazing. That's, that's nice to have the, but then to hear that some of them feel under pressure to, to, to positively spin or the audience thinks that that's worrying to me because that's not simply not the case. And, and the other thing I wanted to say is that um, this happens in every industry. Every industry in technology has these events. Like they, they exist everywhere, right? If you if you are reviewing cars, you get flown to to those events too. If you're reviewing, I don't know what computers. And I just saw an Apple event. You know, like I, for the first time, there were a lot of people I've never seen in my life before because they deal with Apple stuff and it's not all relevant for filmmakers. So I actually met a lot of international journalists, national international journalists that write about those products. And I read a lot of those reviews of the iPad Pro afterwards because they actually sometimes got it right after the loaner and then tested it. And even though they were at the event, guess what? It's a very balanced review and it will still talk about the fact that it's, you know, like uh, there are issues with it and here and that. So yeah. it's, it's, it, it's nothing connected to those things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's from different aspects. I think it's our dignity, it's our ability to stand in front of the mirror and say, are we serving our community the best we can? On the other hand, keep good relationship uh, with the manufacturer, manufacturers try to, it's because it's always two ways, as we said, yeah, they, they we, we are able to uh, give feedback. We are able to get a product beforehand. And I don't know if you guys think that we are doing something, I don't know, actually, if we can do things better, just let us know. It's important also to hear. But I really, I, I still didn't find a way to dismantle the the basic suspicion that that many people ha uh, have in, in, in such a generation that first everything is biased and then, yeah, so. But I think it's a, it's a type of labeling also. I mean, you, I feel like if we think back the early days of the DSLR revolution where, um, there were there, social media wasn't as prominent as it no, is now, and I'm I'm I specifically mean that manufacturers were not because there are of course manufacturers that that will basically just hire a creator to do a video about a product, you know, and this has to be like uh, if it's a reel, for example, you know, like you. But and, we will never use this exactly. I mean. But I'm saying that I think that's where the that's where the issue comes from from a lot of people is like uh first of all some things are presented as reviews online but they're not and we're very clear with this when something is a review it will be called review it will be on the review section on our website and if something is a, a show news video or an interview about a product those are not things where we share our opinion those are literally things to introduce a product but then we're not reviewing it. We're not touching. It. We're asking a representative of the company to tell us about a new product. That's why we do the show coverage. But those are not reviews, and maybe we have to do a better job of 
actually Maybelline? making that clear to know. people. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I, I know that's where part of the confusion comes from because I think a lot of people just, their attention spans have gotten a lot shorter. So when you see a reel online about a product, first thing you need to ask yourself, is this from the manufacturer? If it's not from the manufacturer, is it from somebody who's actually using the product? And if it's, uh, if it's from somebody like that, is that person hired by the company or are they sharing their own opinion? So that's, there's a lot of different things and I think you almost need media training for those things to find out and it's not always easy, I think. Um, so. Yeah. Good. You know, I think we will not be able ever be able to convince everybody with our good intentions in, in, in general that we, we are here for the people and we are here also, of course, to satisfy us, our curiosity and our professional needs in the sense of it's just a lot of fun to film. It's yeah. a lot of fun to That's why we're touch, doing it, right? touch products. And I can only sometimes go like this and say, can't believe it. I'm in a certain situation, in a certain meeting, something that uh, I could only dream of uh, about when I was much younger. But the intentions are really... Yeah, just just to do better products and to do whatever we can in order to to share it or our experiences with with the manu with uh, with the audience. That's the same with the uh, factory tools, by the way. Yeah, and those factory tools, are one of the the ways to share our excitement about s something. Uh, and I think one thing to add also to that is that if you look back, you know, like we've been doing this for a long time, but I think the only way to do this for a long time, and you see it with many others who's been doing it, it doesn't even, not just in our industry, but in any of those review areas, I think the road to success is to be honest about those things, or to be honest in your reviews. And and the ones that are, are just chills of manufacturers are not around for very long, I believe, right? Because you either... From a personal reason, it's very unsatisfying to do that, I think, over a long period of time because you're kind of not true to yourself. I mean, like everybody, all of us uh, who are actually filmmakers who are doing that, um, you know, like I think you can't sugarcoat something if you don't like it for a very long time. You can do this for some years if you're really after the money, but that, that, that's not gonna that's not going to last. And I, I think you see it. I think not, those who have been doing this for a long time uh, – are all the ones who provide good quality to the audience, to the viewer, uh, in the sense that it's it's unbiased, it's balanced, and that's the only way to yeah. do this for a long period of time. So we will still leave it what is unbiased or what is an unbiased review uh, to you guys to decide. Um, yeah, we will just we, we, we hope that we are on the same side here and not working against each other. And yes, we do have contact to the manufacturers. Yes, we do have contact to our audience. And well, I think it's fair to say that sometimes we're, we're more after getting, be, making them make a good camera rather than having a video that does super well. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes, of course, it would be the easier route to to write a super clickbait article uh, and then actually people watch the video. I think we've been doing quite well. I'm sure there's here and there is a clickbait article, but uh, like a clickbait title. But in reality, those things are often quite negative, right? Like if you really want to be clickbaity, uh, you need to be very... It's difficult yeah. to get to do something honest and clickbaity that is true to the actual video that's behind it. And I would say I that ninety five percent of the time our titles are very <laughs> very boring. Uh, we've been yeah, exercised exactly. for but that. That's the problem. That's, that's why fun. the videos sometimes don't have as much traffic as they deserve. I think. But on the other hand, I feel you know like I can look myself in the mirror, and we've never had a title which is like this is the worst camera I've ever reviewed. You know, like oh, this I is pointless. Re replace this one in favor of this one, and so on. But yeah. Okay, you know. Well, now um, people will send us those examples of. The that's word. fine. That's also fine. We are here to learn, and I, again. Don't be shy. Let us know in the comments. Um, yeah, or I mean, email it's a, us. It's a, it's a very, it's a very, it's a tough topic. It's a tough yeah. topic, especially when you're running a business, and that's fine. I mean, that's um, that's. Uh, well, the thing is, we that's one thing I guess which we have to touch on. We are in a fortunate position in that way that we, our, how should I say? First of all, 
we very consciously have two retailers as our main video sponsors, right? B and H and CVP for the review. So you see the B and H and CVP logo on those videos. So we do. We're not ashamed to say that they are our affiliate and sponsors for the for the video. So meaning. Um, They sell everything, right? They don't care if they sell a Canon, a Sony, a Fuji, a Panasonic, whatever camera, as long as they sell, right? So, and they never also ask us to do anything. Not at all. Yeah, it's it was, like complete. It's, we can do yeah. whatever we want, but we guarantee them to put their buy links if they have a product on the website and on the video. That's it, and that's what we do. And I think that's one way, of course, to stay clear of uh, too much because if you're too dependent on the manufacturer that you make the video about to actually make money that's 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 the problem and the other thing of course is we have the website versus a lot don't have a website because it's not en vogue or cool anymore i guess but it's basically a lot of people are trying to do 100% youtube 100% instagram 100% whatever or just social media and uh We, YouTube channel is important for us, but it's not the main outlet. Yeah. The main outlet is the website and uh, where we can, in terms of designing it, in terms of guidelining people, uh, present the information the way we want to present it. Of course, YouTube is important because on one hand, if we do well, hopefully people from YouTube will actually end up on our website where we do have advertising, like banner advertising from all kinds of manufacturers. But that, of course, helps. You know, like that helps us to to um, not be too dependent on on an individual video and uh, it's it's always like a yeah it's a but it's also a business decision that we made because putting all your eggs for example in YouTube yeah doesn't matter how how big you are how good you do if tomorrow YouTube will decide to do something a little bit different and something that might hurt your viewership or business model or whatever you are doomed basically that's why the site the synity.com we have the, the the written site which is the fundamental of everything that we do this is completely under our supervision guidance uh, ownership whatever but we have the control on it and everything else which is social media or or uh, YouTube or whatever we are aware of course we have presence presency and it's it's strong and good 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 for us, but that will never be the main thing. So, totally. Yeah. All right, let's move into some new stuff. So, um, of course, you know, just some important smaller stuff. Actually, no, no huge announcements last week. Uh, we did a poll on touchscreen editing for videos, photos, and sound. Are you considering it? Maybe, Johnny, you want to talk about that? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I say that we are doing all, almost like weekly polls just to fill the pools. And, and again, here you guys as much as possible because you have to choose an answer. Hopefully the answers that we have are kind of <laughs> to the target. And um, that one thing came up right after you visited Apple because obviously Apple is trying to push a certain agenda here with touchscreen and, and editing on uh, the iPad and so on. So we were just very curious to know if we are actually ready for it. And when I... When you click on the view results, you see that almost, what, 250 people uh, took the time to vote. There are also um, a few comments on our site. But you see that the majority of people are actually not interested at all in editing, uh, like touchscreen editing. And being an old-fashioned, I can understand why. I don't know how it is for you. Will you consider uh, touchscreen editing? Well, I think it's... It's always, you know, like, who do you ask? Like, who do we ask on our website? We ask uh, people who are very much in, in the traditional um, business already. You know, like, uh, most of our audience are professionals who are working. So they're used to this way. So for sure, for them, it would be less efficient. If you're a professional video editor, like editing TV, commercial, cinema... I don't think the touch will be... Not at all. But for the one-man band, let's say that we just did a... Uh, an interview, a video interview on a, on a on a show. Will you rush to edit this interview on on iPad? Let me put it this way: I haven't tried it properly enough yet, so I, I plan on doing that on a review of the new Final Cut um, app for iPad once we get access to that. 
Um, but right now, no. Um, but I know we had a, we did a video many years ago about Luma Fusion, which was a really easy video where we invited a guy who's actually very used to editing uh, with Luma Fusion, and I had just had him show it on the iPad. That thing got hundreds of thousands of views. I think it's like two or three hundred thousand views. So you know that there's a lot of interest in that, and 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 as typical for Apple, they don't look at very small niche so they will always look at the bigger picture if they do something like that there's a reason behind it they will not be particularly interested in just our small professional filmmaking niche or whatever you call it i think they're much more interested in a much broader they they want every mom and pop shop uh, around the corner to be able to film little content with their iphones and then edit directly on their devices so i think it will if it's done properly, it will become popular. It will become more popular. Will it ever replace the professional editing with keyboard and mouse? I don't think so. However, there is a agreement, I would almost say, online, like after the latest iPad Pro announcement that, you know, like everybody's a little bit frustrated with the um, iPad OS. I mean, it's, it can do a lot, Um but it's not macOS. Mm. You're limited with file systems. You cannot. You have, don't have this freedom to install everything you you want. Apple is also under pressure from the EU to allow side loading. You mean like other app stores? So they're trying different. So that you know, like people want. People understand that now you have those uh, iPads specifically with enormous power. But there is very little software to actually utilize this, right? So um, I think it's a bit of a, on one hand, of course, a lot of people we see also in the comments here that are complaining that with a finger you cannot be as exact as with a cursor, which is true. But I think it's all it all comes down to proper interface design, right? Like if somebody adjusts that interface in a way that it makes sense, there will be absolutely, I'm convinced, uh, use cases where editing short stuff on touch will actually be much, much more intuitive and much easier than doing this with a cursor, a mouse, or a touchpad. But it's it's it 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 simply needs the software and it simply needs probably Apple to open up more uh, because if I have to think twice of how do I actually get the footage from that camera inside the device um, and how can I export it, that's already a problem, right? I, I just want to be able to plug in an SD card. I want to connect some. It's getting better slowly. Now you can use SSDs and so on, but it's really still like, come on, you can do better. Yeah. yeah. Well, it also seems to me like it's a bit longer. So far, keyboard and mouse looks very straightforward, maybe because that's what I'm used to. But if I need to describe, for example, um, a system, how to cut by words might take me longer and if I do this with a finger that might be not so accurate and so on so yeah for now I am one of those voters that <laughs> voted that I'm not interested for now well yeah I think a lot comes down to the fact that nobody has yet figured out a way to have an operating system that works in both wor worlds properly um, and I guess that's very hard, right? Like if something is designed for mouse and keyboard, it's designed for mouse and keyboard, and the other thing is where is designed for touch. Um, I think Microsoft has been trying this with the Surface uh, laptops um, that have two, dual functions and so on. And 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 it's it's if somebody figures that out to do, I mean, Da Vinci actually, Da Vinci for iPad is fully featured. That's I haven't. I also want to try this out more. But this has most of the functions. Maybe, Alex, you can say something about this. Have you tried Da Vinci for iPad? Not yet, no. Okay, well, th but that's the thing, right? Uh, I, I hear that it's, it's, it's a lot more powerful than at least the first version of Final Cut for iPad. And um, You yeah. know what I really need? All this professional mumbo-jumbo. I just need to take the hundreds of hours of me filming the kids and the family... <laughs> I need I need to simply put it somewhere in a in a in a system that will understand and just give certain simple commands and that it will add 
the, the family videos for me. But there was that a- will save my marriage, not that they're in any <laughs> danger, but that will always like, you know, you're taking so much footage of your kids, trying new cameras and whatever, but will will I ever, that's the, the question that my wife always ask, asking me, will I ever see anything edited from all of these so many hours of footage? And that's what I want. I don't want all of this. But remember many, many years ago, Apple had mag- like iMovie, is existed for what yeah. 20 something years for the for the Mac now and there was a function called magic iMovie and you just literally dropped in everything <laughs> and you told it cut it for me and <laughs> then you got some random result with music and everything so maybe that's the solution for yeah, you yeah we then. still get on the iPhone all of those memory stuff but, I'm but just now we have AI right maybe AI should be able to Make some something watchable at some point. <laughs> I don't know. All I'll I keep know my is, eye out for but, you. But I want it. A, a little tab so it says Johnny's Johnny's mode, family mode, and you click this. All of you guys will thank me forever. We'll o- know autopilot, it, but, autopilot. Yeah, and then just just edit something so all the wives are out there can be completely <laughs> relaxed and say, Ah, a new camera, great! Please shoot. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna see the footage soon. Well, okay. Let let's. You know, maybe we get some comments on people that know solutions for that. We're very happy to hear. What next? What's next? Uh, well, two things from Tilta, which is quite, which are quite interesting. So Tilta announced the Hydra articulating car mounting system. Now, the original Hydra um, system I reviewed, what is now, what through two and a half, three years ago almost, um, that was a proper big mounting system where you can you know add um, suction mounts anywhere on the car and there's different ways of mounting a gimbal or the camera directly um, to the car actually a very popular system Um, we still see a lot of people using this and this is made of course for a little bit bigger cameras Um, maybe I can just play the beginning of the video here for those people who are watching uh, the uh, the video version of this. Um, so this is quite a cool system, but now the problem with this was that it's still quite big. I mean, it's like you, you know, it's a big suitcase and it's not something you would just take with you um, randomly because like with drone shots, you sometimes only need a couple of shots with from a car uh, hood or something like that. Yeah. We actually talked about that last week where we, Talked about the MovMax system. Where is that? Uh, MovMax. There's a link somewhere. Anyway, this MovMax system, which is like a suction mount for the car hood that we reported about, which can just hold like a pocket, uh, Osmo Pocket 3 or... Uh, ah, the MovMax. The, MovMax, yeah. MovMax, yeah. Um, so that is really for the small thing. So Tilta actually now developed something for in between, I would say. Uh, so this system is uh, consists of three articulating arms that are connected to suction cups, and um, yeah, let me scroll down here. Where's that? Yeah. So you see how small this package is. So it's like a little suitcase you can throw in the car. It's probably same size as a gimbal bag, um, and if you need it, you can use it. And if you don't use it, it's also not a big loss and not taking up too much space. And it's around four hundred fifty dollars. So it's quite versatile, I think. Um, you can mount the camera directly to the top or you can also, um, I think this is a ball mount, you can probably also um, attach a 75 millimeter um, tripod head. So you're quite flexible with this. Uh, looks quite interesting. And I think a lot of people, I think I, I'm sure this was done as response for because I, I know the Hydra Alien car mounting system, the, the full one is quite successful. So I'm sure this was something to add a little bit for for smaller setups. But th- there's another version which is yeah. even smaller and this well, is this actually is, the one that caught my imagination. What yeah, is that's it? a, it's called the Hydra Electron... Well, I really have difficulties with these names, but it's all Hydra. This is a Hydra Electronic Suction Cup. So the problem with suction cups, of course, always is that there's always a little bit of like... Meh, is it really holding? So what you do is like you pump out the air. Usually there's like a button that you press and you pump out the air. Um, and then you're kind of like trying if it, it's really holding well. And then if you put this on a car hood, you will still... Uh, Gaffer, sorry, well, you not, connect it, <laughs> no, no, connect, connect it with a <laughs> yeah, yeah. proper... With cable uh, and cable, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Gaffer. Um, and 
Well, this one is an electronic suction cup that can electronically um, kind of suck out the air. So it, it, it automatically makes the correct pressure on your car, right? So basically you press the button, it, it has a little motor built in and a battery, of course, and it will automatically um, find the exact pressure that it needs to put it on the car. And um, that's quite neat, of course, because it can make you, you see it here in the video, uh, you, you can be sure that it's properly secured after that. And um, I think one full charge of that battery should uh, allow for, they say, 24 hours of constant use, which is a lot. So I, I, I guess you don't have to charge it every time. So this is very smart. And I guess this can be combined um, with a couple of mounting brackets that they offer um, and then you can put a, you know, can put it on the side of the car or something like that with a little uh, articulating arm. So quite neat. I think this also will find a very good spot in the market. Maybe we can review this. That's actually quite interesting. Good. And okay. uh, I mean, we. Uh, I just want to compare it to another system that we reported about last year, which is the Rig Wheels Kraken system. Now, we've used the rig wheels uh, connectors in the past because the cool thing about that is they use magnets, very strong magnets. Um, I think you still have a magnet on your car that you couldn't take off, no? <laughs> <laughs> no we, well, actually, I don't know about this system, but the, the, the rig wheel system, uh, we had these small magnets when we did our, we, we ha used to have a little podcast almost uh, called On The Go, where we did interviews in a car driving around Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Amsterdam. Where else did we do it? Yeah. I think that's it. And uh, so we mounted those action cams with two magnets. Just So literally no suction cups. Just put one magnet outside of the window, one magnet on the other side, and then uh, just attach it. And it was perfect. I think so that's the, strong. so strong and the easiest way to attach uh, uh, cameras very quickly, uh, assemble and disassemble. So... You know, the rig wheel system is really good for the magnetic stuff if people are interested. And you can also put heavy cameras on it. Now, this Kraken system, we haven't touched, we haven't tried, but it looks cool too. Uh, you can, as you see, you can put much bigger um, cameras on that too. Good. I think we can wrap it up here. That was a good, well, I think an hour now. Um, good talk. I'm very curious to see what people will want to know and comment on on what we talked about today. Uh, I think it's an interesting discussion. I think it's it's good that people talk about it. Um, I just think everything has to be taken with a grain of salt. And I think, as you said, those there's no conspiracy. You know, like I, I almost feel like some people are thinking that um, everything is a bought opinion or something like that. And it, that's that's simply that's simply weird for me uh, to think that because I, if you, if you watch a review that we did, like where, where's the, you know, like it's, it's not as, as if everything is amazing. It's, it's not, <laughs> we have to be talking to professionals. You can't fool professionals. Yeah, but I guess the contact with manufacturer, the contact with the people working for the manufacturers, all, all this somehow being boiled into Ah, that's already, you have the personal contact, maybe this is yeah. somehow affecting your review. And I think that, I, I wish there was a way to separate between the respect to what others are doing and, and to opinion. And then I think that everything would have been a bit easier. But hey. Yeah, and I, I also recommend people just to look at other industries and you have journalists, like that we in the end we're journalists, right? That's what we are. And that's where we also come from as documentary filmmakers because we always had this very journalistic attitude also to do those things properly, because that's where we are coming from. Also in our professional field, we have been working with journalists for two decades, uh, also on, on production shoots, you know, like that, that's where the ethic also comes from, I think. And that's, that's very important to, to, to have that integrity. Yeah. Good. All right. Thanks everybody for watching and Thank listening. You guys. And hear you on the next episode of Synergy Focus Check. By the way, where can they find the podcast? Oh, yeah, podcast? yeah I Well, you can find the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the other ways. And, of course, YouTube. And please don't forget to subscribe there and give us a good rating. We would really appreciate it because we are always happy about having new listeners. Thank you. Thank you, guys.